What's up guys? Welcome to this week's episode of DIY Dad. Thanks for tuning in. So this episode we're going to do something a little different. Spring is here, the grass is growing, trees are in bloom. So we're going to talk about yard safety. Uh, you know, over 100 people die every year. Uh, 143,000 people are sent to the ER due to uh, using power tools. So I think it's important that we talk about that now and get this out of the way before the season gets started and you get into things. All right, stay tuned. All right, before we get this one started, I want to clear a few things up because on my one of my last videos, I had a lot of people thinking that I was sponsored by Ryobi. And I just want to let you guys know, I am not sponsored by Ryobi. I'm just a little bit crazy. Um, that's why I have all this stuff. I obviously like the brand. So, but yeah, just to clear that up, I am not sponsored by Ryobi. So, we're here to talk about lawn tool safety because like I said, it is spring. It is the season when we're all getting out there and making our yards look pretty. Um, you don't want to get hurt when you're doing this. There's a lot of ways that you can get hurt. You can overexert yourself. You can become dehydrated, you can get cuts, uh, you can even get uh, fingers and limbs amputated if you're not careful. Uh, ladders are a big part of this too, they actually cause more injuries than power equipment itself. Um, and you have to remember if you are working with gas powered equipment, that carbon monoxide poisoning is another danger. Um, also getting... Uh, um, having lawnmowers tip over on you and bystanders can also get hurt too so you also have to remember that when you're doing any kind of yard work so the first thing that we're going to talk about is lawnmowers so let's do that okay so lawnmower safety tips number one you always want to walk the yard and check for anything that could potentially become a projectile such as rocks children's toys branches anything like that so I'm moving everything out of the way, getting everything nice and clear so we don't have any kind of obstacles. Number two, clothing is very important. You want to wear closed-toed shoes and you want to wear pants to protect your legs. Uh, you should also wear some safety goggles for anything that might fly up towards your eyes. You also want to keep all children and pets out of the yard and away from what you're doing because again flying debris could get into someone's eye or pierce someone's skin and potentially send someone to the hospital you know, if, if you're using a riding lawnmower you don't want to let children sit on your lap when mowing and you also want to make sure that if you are letting your children mow the grass that they're old enough to use the power equipment Typically, uh, they recommend that a child be at least 12 years old to use a walk-behind mower and at least 16 years old for a riding lawn mower. Uh, you want to be very careful on inclines. So if you're using a riding lawn mower, you want to mow up and down the slope. Um, and it's the opposite if you're using a push mower, you want to mow parallel to the slope just because it's easier to control the push mower than going up and down having to fight it that way. Uh, if there ever is a branch or something else that is in your way and you missed picking it up, just as a good safety tip, you want to turn the mower off and or stop the blade before you bend over to pick it up. Also, you don't want to mow when it's wet uh, because you could, uh, you could slip. You want to avoid slipping and also the grass doesn't cut as well either. Uh, mower maintenance is a big thing. You want to make sure that your mower is maintained. If it is a gas-powered one, make sure your fluids and everything are where they should be. You want to use gloves when checking or changing the blade. And only work on the mower when it's off and all the way cooled down. That way you don't risk getting yourself burned or spilling, hot flu or sp spilling fluids over a hot engine and starting a fire or anything like that. Uh, one last tip, if you are using a gas-powered motor mower, you want to add the gas outside not inside a garage or a shed again make sure the engine is off and cool and also um, make sure that you're not mowing in an enclosed area you probably won't be but i just have to say that um, but yeah those are my yard tips for the lawnmower so let's move on and talk about trimmers and hedge clippers
Now hedge clippers and trimmers can be very dangerous because they can cause very deep lacerations and even amputations if you're not careful. So that is why we need to be very careful when we use these. As always, we need to wear the correct protective gear such as gloves, eyewear, boots, and long pants. Also, if you're using gas-powered equipment, it's not a bad idea to wear hearing protection. A lot of times the equipment can get very noisy and the prolonged periods of excessive noise will eventually cause damage to your hearing. So hearing protection is a great idea. Um, again, we need to check for any loose items that may be in the area that the string trimmer could kick up or that the hedge clipper clippers could uh, get called on. And lastly, just as a general courtesy, you always want to turn off the trimmer if somebody walks by because you don't want things to fly up and hit them in the face or on the skin. So if somebody is walking by when you're doing your trimming um, or your weed whacking, just as a courtesy, turn the machine off and wait for them to pass before you continue. In this section, we're gonna talk pressure washers. Uh, a lot of people like to pressure wash their driveways, uh, back porches, houses, whatever it may be. Um, just so you know, you're not gonna get a fancy video montage with this one because I don't actually have anything that I need to pressure wash right now and I didn't wanna pull everything out and hook it up and go through the process of putting it back. So you're just gonna get me for this video. Uh, so number one, most important tip is if you are using a gas powered pressure washer, I don't have that problem because I use an electric one. But if you're using a gas-powered one, make sure that you never use it indoors or in an enclosed area. Carbon monoxide poisoning does happen to people every year because they forget this. So, you know, just be smart about where you're using it. Make sure it's in a well-ventilated area or outside. Uh, second tip is you want to avoid zero-degree nozzles. Those are the kind of nozzles that concentrate the spray, the water spray, into a single stream. Those are very dangerous because it basically cuts like a knife. And if you accidentally run it over your hand or your leg, it's going to cause a really nasty injury. So instead, you want to use 15 degree, 25 degree, or 45, 40 degree nozzles. Um, they also make these like these turbo nozzles that you can use too that work really well. Um, so use those options just so you don't have to, you know, foot the bill for a trip to the emergency room uh, because you were using something that you shouldn't have. Uh, and Speaking of that, you also want to wear the correct protective gear. Uh, so you want to wear goggles, you want to wear pants. Um, it's really important to have slip resistant footwear, especially depending on the surface that you are washing and going to be walking on because you don't want to slip and fall and hurt yourself. Uh, another thing is you never want to use a pressure washer on a ladder. When you do uh, pull the trigger to shoot the water out, it does have a little bit of kickback. And if you're not careful, that could make you lose your balance and fall off a ladder and we, there's so many accidents because of people on ladders every year and we don't want that to happen to you so if you do need to pressure wash something that's higher up or you know the second story of your house you get, get one of the the longer nozzles here that reaches out really far that's just a lot safer than being on a ladder um, another important safety tip is you never want to point the the tip of this thing at people yourself, your friend, a kid, a pet, any, anybody, any child, any person, any animal, um, just because you could accidentally push that trigger even if you're playing around and you don't want to cause a really serious accident because you're playing. It's just, you know, like when you use a gun, you just get in the habit of not pointing it at people. It's just the safest thing to do. Um, also, uh, one thing that you want to do is whenever you are changing out your nozzles, it's best practice to just turn off the machine uh, because you could accidentally hit that trigger button when you've just changed the nozzle out or, or just before you change it out and get yourself in the hand with that pressure washer and that's just an injury that can be easily avoided by turning off the machine before you do any kind of um, nozzle changes. And lastly, my the, the last tip I'm going to give you guys is make sure that you use pump protectant in your pressure washer after every use when you're done. Um, just put the pump protected in there so that way you can have your pressure washer maintain it for years to come without having to get a new one. Um, and those are my pressure washing tips. So we're going to move on to chainsaws after this, one of my personal favorites. So here we go.
All right, so here we are with chainsaws. Number one and most important safety tip here is your protective gear. You want to be wearing some good sturdy boots, some long pants, gloves, um, hearing protection, especially if you're using a gas-powered chainsaw, and also eye protection. Um, everything that you wear you want to make sure is snug fitting. Uh, you don't want to have any kind of loose clothing that can get caught up in the chainsaw. Um, if you're going to be doing a lot of big cutting, you probably might even want to wear a helmet with a, a face shield even. Um, one thing, you always want to make sure that your saw is in proper working order. This includes checking your blade, blade tension, adjusting the blade tension, oiling it, making sure that there's uh, bar oil in there, and that you have a sharp chain. Um, another thing is you want to avoid cutting with the tip of the saw that can create kickback and which can be dangerous and you also don't want to plunge the saw into dirt when you're cutting. Um, and probably one of the most important tips here is only saw what is within your reach. You don't want to reach over your head to try to cut down a branch. Um, you also don't want to chainsaw on a ladder. There really is nothing more dangerous than using a chainsaw on a ladder. Um, so yeah, just keep all of that in mind and stay safe, stay safe when you are out there cutting stuff up. Make sure that if you're felling trees that you know exactly what you're doing um, so you don't damage any property or severely hurt yourself. Okay, so that's all the tips that I have for you guys. Again, I just wanted to make this video because we got summer coming up, you guys are gonna be out there, and I want each and every one of you to stay, stay safe and stay out of the hospital, avoid hurting yourself, avoid hurting other people. So make sure that you just run through these safety tips before you do any kind of yard work, and you know, be safe with whatever you're doing. All right, thank you guys for tuning in, and as always, like this video. If you learned something, subscribe to my channel. Um, come join us on Facebook in the Ryobi Rebels Facebook group. It's a really awesome group of guys. We have a good fellowship. We talk about tools. We talk about everything Ryobi. So join us there, and I'll see you guys next week. A thousand people died. 143,000 sent to the ER. I'm not reading this from a paper. Overextension, dehydration, cuts, amputation, ladder falls, cause more injuries and power equipment. Air button, model loop. Do you see me? How can you read your handwriting? Ha! What is that? Carp? Oh. <laughs> Gas-powered engines. It looks like carbon. Manu